So I came across this video by Veritasium that claimed that the predominant explanations for why water moves towards an object carrying an electric charge, say a balloon or a cup or something, were actually wrong. I showed you that an electrically charged object can deflect a stream of water. But it is not due to the common explanation, the common reason which is given, which is that water is a polar molecule. And then they then gave their explanation for why the water was moving towards the charged object. So what really is causing this water to be attracted towards the cup? Well, it is charges, but it is ions. It is dissolved ions in the water. There will be some OH ions, some H plus ions, and there will also be some other impurity ions in the water. So what happens when you hold this negatively charged cup up against the water stream is it will repel the negative charges, the negative ions in the water, some of which will go back up into the tap. And that means the water coming down will be slightly positively charged. And once it breaks up into droplets, those droplets have a positive charge that they can't get rid of. So now those positive droplets are attracted to the negatively charged cup. And you can see those droplets swirling around the cup because they are so attracted to it. And they say that's because it's actually carrying a net charge. Now, I was deeply skeptical about this new explanation because ions moving back up into the tap, that just didn't sound right to me. But to an extent, my skepticism is not relevant here because in science, we create models that describe reality. A model's utility comes from its ability to describe reality. In short, science bitches, it works. So if you want to show a model is wrong, it's simple. All you have to do is make a prediction from that model and then show that it doesn't accurately describe reality. That is, reality is going to be the ultimate judge on these matters. So let's devise a simple apparatus. So this is my very simple apparatus consisting of essentially a glass tube with a syringe at the top that holds about 25 milliliters of water. That's about a shot glass's worth of water. Now this is effectively an electrically isolated system. That is, charge cannot effectively leak away from this object. So if veritasium is right, then when we actually move a charged object next to the stream of water coming out of the bottom of this, then we should initially see that it's attracted which means that we are actually carrying a net positive charge away from the rest of the water, which means that the rest of the water must carry a net negative charge. So what you should see, if veritasium is right, is the first water that comes out should be attracted to the actual negatively charged balloon, then it should become neutral, and then last of all, the water should be strongly repelled from the balloon that it was initially attracted to. So what happens in reality? Okay, so I have one cup, which I'm gonna hold about there. And now I'm gonna charge up my cup. Put the water in the top. And now, rotating this right, at the end, the water should be repelled in the other direction, and no, no it's not. Okay, it's just the same deal, but this time we're going to choose a big ass balloon. So, first of all, I charge up my balloon on my hair. Water. And our balloon gives us a nice big deflection. So, if we're rotating this right, we should have less deflection at the end. And the answer is not a bit of it. We get more deflection at the end. Yep, that's a pretty decisive experiment for showing that we're really not looking at the separation of charges here. That is, the model suggested by Veritasium does not describe reality. That is, it's wrong. But it turns out maybe not completely wrong. Because unless my vision fails me, the general principle that Veritasium was actually driving at here is actually essential to the functioning of a device called a Kelvin dropper. Hi gang, this is the Kelvin water dropper, and it's one way to produce electricity from falling water. Water falls from these two containers up here, down through these two cans, and into these cans. The result is a spark every now and then down here. 
Now, the Kelvin dropper, invented, of course, by Lord Kelvin, was meant to show how you get really quite decent static electricity buildups around moving water, most notably in thunderstorms. However, the key element of the Kelvin dropper, where all of the important stuff happens, is where the water goes from a single stream to droplets. And the mere fact that you can get this strong deflection of a solid stream of water coming out of what is essentially a Faraday cage, and that stream can be strongly deflected even when there aren't any drops, should have caused many a scientist to raise an eyebrow. But let's come back to our isolated system here and try a slightly different experiment. Instead of having the charged balloon up where the solid stream of water comes out, let's move it down to where the stream becomes droplets. There's the water. So we get a nice big deflection at the top. And as I move the balloon down, the deflection does become less. Until the end. And it becomes strongly repelled. Cool, eh? And now the behavior is more or less exactly as Veritasium described. Now, the effect does seem weaker. You know, the actual deflection that you get when the water becomes droplets, even after you've taken into account that the water is moving somewhat faster when the water becomes droplets. So this first experiment here clearly shows that the main reason that the water stream bends is not ions going back up into the tap as was suggested by Veritasium, but probably some induced charge from the electric field, which still leaves the water charge neutral as it leaves the tap and not positively charged as is shown in the Veritasium model. Now this does sort of fit together in a more coherent picture. That is when the balloon is near the solid stream, the water molecules and the residual ions rearrange themselves electrostatically, kind of like magnets do. And this creates an attractive force between the water and the balloon. However, when the electric field is much nearer to where the stream is becoming droplets, the Veritasium explanation does seem to be the one with predictive capability. So is this now a better explanation for what's going on here? Well, it's got a lot going for it, but my suspicion, mostly based on a lot of other experiments that I did to get to this really quite simple apparatus shown in this video, suggests that there is a lot more going on here than meets the eye. And that maybe not just the Veritasium and my explanations here are wrong, or at least significantly incomplete, but maybe even Lord Kelvin's too. And a lot of it has to do with what happens when you bring a balloon charged up with static electricity up to a drop of water.